I am well aware that there are those who would claim to believe nothing and rely solely upon knowledge. That claim, however, is still merely an expression of belief that such could even be possible. And in all honesty, it's impossible to not have beliefs. Why? As I have said before, logic is the glue that binds information to form beliefs in a loose sense and then knowledge in a denser sense. Said differently, anything that one can claim to know is based upon a set of beliefs. Generally, within this set of beliefs, especially for those who are not themselves philosophers and even more exactly, for those who are not themselves metaphysicians. These beliefs contain an individual's metaphysical presuppositions. Metaphysical presupposition. Real quick, let's define these terms as simple as possible. A presupposition can be defined as that which is postulated as a necessary antecedent condition or a prerequisite. Also, the word metaphysical can be defined as of or relating to the transcendent or reality beyond what is perceptible by the senses. Your metaphysical presuppositions are what answer part of the question as to what reality at large is. Then from there, set out to answer what is the self and also the continuity between the two. Traditionally, we as men and women have received our metaphysical presuppositions from our cultures and religions. For example, as a Christian, the idea that God has created everything and resides in heaven is a metaphysical presupposition. The point of this isn't to say whether or not this is or is not real, because that would undoubtedly invoke the question of what is real or reality. The fact that these metaphysical presuppositions even invoke such questions is the point that I'm making. Our metaphysical presuppositions set the bounds of what we consider reality at large, or even the metric for what is real and how we would even know such. These questions have been pondered for millennia within the minds of men and women. The expression of the conclusions that were arrived at have manifested through the experiences of those who did the pondering, and the result of that were the original cultures and their religions. Today with so many rejecting these old religions and cultures for a want of what they claim to be some type of reality. They unwittingly find themselves having to start from scratch and once again, ponder the answer to these questions. This is a difficult task, however, and many skip all of the work and jump straight to claiming that they already know. This, however, tends to lead towards creating notions that are more convoluted and dependent upon blind faith than the religions that they claim to have abandoned in the first place. In conclusion, and just in case my point got lost in all of that, any and all realities are constructed with meaning as their fabric. Even the claim that nothing has any meaning has meaning in the implications of that claim. The same way that I consistently suggest to you not to throw the baby out with the bathwater in rejecting defining lines and limitations, I would equally suggest that you strive to maintain and examine the meanings of things as you find them to be. Far too often, people will strip the meaning of a thing, find it to be hollow, and then declare that it never had any meaning to begin with. And when I say people, I'm more than likely referring to you. No, not the other person, but you. And if you thought for even just a moment that I couldn't possibly be referring to you, then I guarantee you that I am.